Hey, what's up? Pete Solving Nerd here. Today, we're doing a Dead Distros video on Antargos. Now, this was actually a really popular Linux distribution back in its day. I, I think it was number three or four in DistroWatch or something. I can't remember exactly, but it was very high on DistroWatch. And uh, I even used it for quite a while, and I've made several videos where I've used Antargos as my main distro, my older videos. Don't watch those, they're cringe. So I thought, hey, Antargos has been discontinued for like, I don't know, 10 months. Uh, let, let's make a video about it, because uh, why not? According to Wikipedia, Synarch was a Arch distribution that used Cinnamon by default, which if you don't know what Cinnamon is, it's the desktop environment made by the Linux Mint team. If you don't know what it is, you must be living under a rock or something. I don't know. However, the issue of Synarch was that Cinnamon uh, didn't really care about the newest GDK releases, they just used whatever Ubuntu used. So, when Arch had a rolling release structure where it always had the newest version of GDK, Cinnamon didn't work properly. So, Synarch was discontinued and Intargos was the successor. It shipped with the GNOME 3 desktop, but it was still Arch-based and kept up with the rolling release of Arch. Eventually, Intargos partnered with the Numix project to bring their square icons to Intargos with the exclusive Numix Frost theme. Eventually though, in May 2019, the developers announced the end of the project because they didn't have time to work on it. So, they released an update that basically switched their Intargos installation to an Arch installation, and yeah. Now, uh, Endeavor OS became a spiritual successor to Intargos, while it's a completely different distro. It is still made by a lot of the people who worked on Intargos. However, for a true successor to Intargos OS, look at Reborn OS, which is a net install distro with the same installer as Intargos. Anyways, let's take a look at Intargos now. Now, uh, this is what it looks like out of the box when you first boot into it. Now, Intargos actually has a very unique installer. It's its own installer. And I wanted to show off the installation of uh, Intargos before I look at it. So if you click on install it, select your language, obviously. Um, it does want, it does recommend Cinchi to be up to date. However, I can't update this because then I'll just be running Pure Arch instead. So that's an issue. But here's where it gets cool. There are several options of desktop environments you could do. So if you want, you can go for base install where you can install anything you want basically. So it's kind of like installing Pure Arch. We have the Budgie desktop. We have the Cinnamon desktop, which is what Intargos originally originated with. We got the Deepin desktop, which is kind of ironic because Reborn OS uh, was originally Intargos Deepin, but then Intargos added Deepin, so... <laughs> we got Gnome, which is the flagship desktop environment, which is what I'm going to use. i3, which is a tiling window manager. We have KDE, which uh, is a very customizable Qt desktop. Again, if you don't know what KDE or Gnome is, you're probably living under a rock. Mate, a fork of Gnome 2. Openbox, which is a uh, highly customizable w window manager, although I don't think it's tiling. And XFCE, just another very fast desktop. Now I'm going to go with GNOME, but it's cool you get all these options. Now after you select your desktop, there are other packages you could choose here. So if you want advanced power management, you can click on that. Bluetooth support. We have Librem. We have Lembrame, I think where you can sync your GNOME settings and stuff, you can install LibreOffice, basically you can install whatever you want with this. I can install Steam, but uh, this is only a basic amount of things. If you hit show advanced features, you get even more stuff. So I can do AUR support, Firefox, Adobe Flash. There are just quite a few options in here, which is pretty nice. Now I'm just gonna go for basic install, nothing special. Here we are now we have a verify screen now I, i've spent a lot of time on this installer because honestly the installer is one of the flagship features of intargos but it's not the only feature because there's quite a few other features too so 
uh, when this is done installing, I'll show you some of those. So, uh, Q to the the the, 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 inst the install finish. Yeah. Oh no, there is an error. It turns out since the Intargos repos are down, it turns out since the Intargos repos are down, it's not able to find any of these packages. Well, crap! I just wasted your time for nothing. Well, uh, since that didn't work, it's it's we're just gonna look at the live ISO. Uh, discontinued Arch-based distros. Ugh. Now, according to About, we're running GNOME 3.32 on here, which, honestly, I thought was going to be 3.30 because this came out in April of last year, but eh. Now that I think about it, that makes sense. So, despite this being almost a year old, this is still a newer version of GNOME than Debian 10. Hehehe, <laughs> he roasted. I noticed GNOME Tweaks is pre-installed, and it's using the Numix Frost Light theme by default for the icons and applications. I don't really like the light theme, I like the frost theme better. To be honest though, I don't really like Numix that much though. Its colors are kind of weird to me. This ships with dash to dock and panel OSD by default. So it is definitely using a pretty customized version of GNOME. Layout wise, it's pretty much the same just with dash to dock installed. However, theming wise, it is definitely customized. Light locker settings, what is this? Okay, so basically this is like sleep mode settings, so you can blink the screen after a certain amount of time. We have privilege granting right here, so you can change whether to use sue or sudo. Kind of an advanced application, I don't think most people would know how to use this. Yeah, that's Intargos. Kind of nostalgic to have, because this distro was old and I used it for a long time. But it's dead now, so that sucks. Check out Endeavor OS, it's actually a really good OS. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. Uh, thanks to my patrons, Michelle Vantino and Sam Covet, with uh, these modern times. You guys know what I'm talking about if you're living in on, on March 18th, 2020. <laughs> During these times, the Patreon money really helps. So thanks to them, you can join in the description for Patreon. And yeah, have a, have a good day, guys.